Hey guys, so here by popular demand is my best SIP provider for 2023, or more better known as self-invested personal pension. Now pensions are important and we should all be contributing to a pension. Because for most of us, when we contribute, we'll be getting 20 to 40% bonus, which is crazy. Yes, you're taxed on the way out, but the money you put in as it grows is really beneficial. Before we start, I have to say there are a lot of pension providers. And I know I'm gonna be asked for a ton that may be missing. I've picked essentially what I think are the most popular pension providers that you want to look at. I have to try and compact this down to fit them all into one video. So I've gone for the most popular and I've also gone for the ones that give me the information the most easily. There's a few providers where I've not been able to find all of the information, which is a bit of a red flag for me, as I think it should all be publicly accessible and I don't want you guys to find a major red flag later. So if you're interested in a pension provider not mentioned here, at least you can use this as a reference point to compare them to some others. I'll also be popping these on my website, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter and I will send that out as soon as it's ready. So I'm going to talk you through the different providers side by side so you can compare them and then I'll tell you what I'm doing and which I think is the best. Okay so the SIP providers mentioned in this video are Hargoose Lansdowne, we've got Interactive Investor, iWeb, Fidelity, AJ Bell and we've got Vanguard, Best Invest and Free Trade. So first let's look at the platform fee. So that's a fee you pay for having your pension account open. Hargoose Lansdowne is 0.45% and that is capped at £16.66 per month. Interactive Investors is £12.99 or £10 if you have another account open, such as your ISA. iWeb has a quarterly charge and it works out if you have less than £50,000, you'll pay £7.50 per month. If you have over £50,000, you'll pay £15 per month. Fidelities is 0.35% if you have a regular savings plan. If you don't, it's £7.50 per month. And that amount drops down as the value of your portfolio increases. Once you get over £250,000 in your account, that amount drops down to 0.2%. AJ Bell charges 0.25% and it's capped at £10 per month. And Vanguard just charges a 0.15% fee, but that is uncapped, which I will demonstrate a little bit later. And Best Invest charge 0.4% and that drops down to 0.1% depending on the amount of money you have with them. And last but not least is Free Trade and they charge £9.99 per month. Next up is the trading fee. So this is the amount you will pay to buy stocks and ETFs. So Hargis Lansdowne charge £11.95 and that's under £10 per month if you trade more, which... To be honest, you're probably not going to. It does drop down. Interactive Investor charge you £5.99 per month. iWeb charge £5 per month. Fidelities is a bit higher at £7.50. AJ Bells is £9.95 for stocks or £1.50 for funds. And Vanguard is free as long as you're buying their ETFs. But of course, if you want instant trading, it's important you have to pay £7.50. This is because they bunch all of the trades together and place them in the next available slot. If you want more precise, accurate trading, you will have to pay that fee. And Best Invest charge £4.95, and for US shares, it's actually free, which is their new USP. And Free Trade, of course, charge zero, hence the name Free Trade. So next, we've got Recurring Buy. So this is if you want to buy on a regular basis, which can bring your costs down quite significantly. So Hargreaves Lansdowne charge £1.50 for this feature, Interactive Investor, a huge selling point. It's actually free if you use regular investing, which if you're using them, definitely do. Because that means you could buy it the once, set up regular investing and just set and forget. iWeb, unfortunately, don't have it. They're going to charge you £5 like their normal charge. Fidelity and AJ Bell are both £1.50 per month. Vanguard have no cost, but again, you have to buy Vanguard's funds. Best Invest, don't offer it. It will either be £4.95 or if you go for funds, it will be free or, of course, US shares. And Free Trade do have the feature, but it's currently in beta. So I can't fully comment in exactly how well that will work. Next up is the fund fee. And this is where you can save some costs if you go for the fund version rather than the ETF version. Confusing, I know, but they both have pros and cons. Typically, a fund is more actively managed, but you do get some that aren't that actively managed. But the basic difference is an ETF tends to be more passive and it's easily more traded on the stock market. A fund, typically, it will just buy the next day, which isn't really an issue. So Hargreaves aren't charging, Interactive Investor don't charge, iWeb is going to cost you £5, Fidelity don't charge for it, AJ Bell are going to charge you £1.50, and on Vanguard and Best Invest, it's also free. Free trade don't actually offer individual funds, it's just ETFs. But remember, just because there's no fee to buy it, it doesn't necessarily mean there'll be no fee for holding the fund. And that will typically fall under your platform fee. But be aware, because some, like Hargis Lansdowne, will charge you for funds and charge you for ETFs separately. So really, if you were with someone like Hargis Lansdowne, you would want to either go for funds specifically or go for ETFs so you're not paying double the fees. 
Next, we've got the FX fee. This is a foreign exchange fee. This is typically used if you're buying overseas shares. If you're buying within the UK or an ETF, it's not going to be applicable. Hargis Lansdowne charge 1%, which scales upwards and gets cheaper the more you buy. Interactive Investors is similar and scales from 1.5%. iWebs is 1.5% fixed. Fidelities is 1% scaling again. AJ Bells is 0.75%. Vanguard, it's not going to be applicable. Best Invest is slightly lower fixed at 0.95%. And with free trade in a pension account, you're going to pay 0.39%. Now, personally, I wouldn't typically associate FX fees with a pension account because I generally believe you should be in a safe fund to make sure your pension is safe. I'd look at things like stocks in an ISA and just make sure of your pension, you've got that reliability. So next, let's take a look at what's available on the platform. So first, we've got shares and ETFs combined. So Hargis Lansdowne has over 8,000 interactive investor has a huge selection of over 40,000 which is the biggest by far. iWeb have over 2,900. Fidelity just say they have thousands that's the best I could get. AJ Bell have over 2,000. Vanguard have all of the Vanguard funds on their platform. Remember you can only buy Vanguard funds on Vanguard which is a shame and generally as well that's why their account fee is cheaper because you're buying into their funds and they're making money that way. Best Invest has over 1,500 and Free Trade has over 6,000. Next let's talk about funds on the platform. Now this is a bit of a muddled figure because a lot of them do tend to include it in one general number so here's what I've been able to find. Hargis Lansdowne has over 3,000. Interactives are included in the 40,000 iWeb, Fidelity and AJ Bell are also included. Vanguard has only their funds again. Best Invest, I've actually managed to ask and they do have 2,000 and Free Trade, of course, doesn't have them. Now, a really important feature to look at with a pension is are you able to do your drawdown? And that's when you get to the end of your pension and you need to start taking it. And do they charge you a fee? Well, with all of these, they're going to basically still charge you their management fee. So for example, Hargis Lansdowne is still going to charge you 0.45% for having your account open. And that's pretty much going to be the same across the board. So the question is really, do they charge you any more? So Interactive Investor aren't going to charge you. iWeb are going to charge you £180 for the year. Fidelity and AJ Bell and actually Vanguard don't charge you. Best Invest, again, don't charge you. And Free Trade actually don't have the functionality to do a drawdown. Now this actually is an end of the world because you could build your pension in one place and then transfer it and do the drawdown separately. So don't get too worried about that if you wanted to use Free Trade. Next, let's talk about the platform itself. So do they have a mobile app? So actually all the providers pretty much have a mobile app except for iWeb, which is unfortunate, and Vanguard. Again, I've mentioned this before, but Vanguard do have a lovely app in the US, which I wish they would bring to the UK, which would make it much more appealing. For desktop, they all have one except for free trade. Personally, I love a desktop app, which is a shame. They did try and make a beta one, but it was just really, really poor. So I think if you're using free trade, you'll definitely just stick to the app. Now, also something quite important to some people is the research on their platform. Now, Hargis Lansdowne have decent research as well as Interactive Investor. iWeb have some, but it's quite basic. Fidelities is good, and I've used that before in actually other videos to research stocks. AJ Bell have some, Vanguard is okay. Best Invest is again, pretty decent, and Free Trade don't really have any information. To be honest, if you are looking for research, I would use something like Simply Wall Street or I'd use other materials instead of specifically using the platform for it. I don't think that relying on inbuilt tools is really the best way to go, but I would use them, of course, for working out the charges, which all of these platforms will have to provide. Now, something that's quite important to me is actually the user interface. So Hargis Lansdowne, I would give a nine out of 10. I really like the design. Interactive Investor, take some getting used to. I'd still give it a seven out of 10. Some people love it or hate it. It's quite simple and basic, but I think that's ideally the way it's designed. iWeb, I would give a five out of 10. I don't like it whatsoever. Fidelities is quite good. I give that an eight out of 10. AJ Bell, again, not very good. Six out of 10. Vanguard, eight out of 10. That's really good. Uh, Best Invest, nine out of 10. They've definitely spent a lot on branding. And Free Trade, I would give a seven out of 10, not including their desktop app, of course. Now, of course, I wouldn't mention any of these providers if they weren't FCA compliant and FSCS compliant. So you're going to be covered up to £85,000 on your cash and all of your assets will actually be held separately. So you're completely safe with any of these if something went wrong. But something important to a lot of people is the company age. Now, Hargis Lansdowne are over 42 years old, Interactive Investor over 28, iWeb over 15 years, Fidelity surprisingly are over 77 years old, which is quite shocking, AJ Bell over 28 years old, Vanguard over 47 years old, Best Invest 37 years, and Free Trade are just seven. 
I don't think there's a massive amount of difference between the majority of those, maybe free trade are slightly on the newer side. More importantly though, I think is the Trustpilot score. So this depends of course how invested they are in the platform, but Hargis Lansdowne have got 4.2 with over 7,400 reviews. Interactive Investors is super impressive, a 4.7 score with over 21,900 reviews, which is crazy. In stark contrast, iWeb a 3.7 score with only 258 reviews, which is not really great. Fidelity, surprisingly, were again quite low at just a four score with nearly 4,000 reviews. Quite a shame, as I would have expected with an older platform, they maybe were more established on there. And AJ Bell have a 4.7 score, which is nice and high, at 3,600 reviews. Vanguard is 4.1 at 2,300. Best in Best, 4.4 with only 600 reviews and free trade is four score with 3,000 reviews. Now, of course, it depends how vested the people are in the platform, but quite interesting to look at all the same. Now let's talk about support because customer support is so, so important and something you really need. Hargis Lansdowne is pretty great. They offer phone and ticket support. Interactive Investor, again, is phone and ticket iWeb is chat and phone, Fidelity, phone and ticket support, AJ Bell is phone, ticket and chat, but of course you might need to phone someone if you want quite serious advice. Vanguard is phone and ticket support, similar to Best Invest and Free Trade only offer ticket support. I've mentioned before, but with Free Trade you definitely need their pro support, which I think is included within a SIP because their free support is quite slow. Something that's really important to note and what I will get asked about is can you transfer your pension into these providers and can it come in as cash or can it be cash and stocks and shares? Well, with Hargreaves Lansdowne, you can do both and it's free. Again, Interactive Investor, you can do both and it's free. iWeb, there's actually a charge which is £60 per pension up to a maximum charge of £300. So be aware if you've got a few pensions to transfer in, that could be an expensive option. Fidelities is free. AJ Bells, again, is free and that's an estimated wait time of three to six months. Some providers don't actually say the wait time, so some may actually be that kind of time too. Vanguard's is free, but it's only Vanguard funds. So if you want to transfer in anything else, they will actually sell it and convert it to cash. So you may want to be a bit careful what you want to sell and what you don't want to sell. Best Invest is free and Free Trade is free. But what I will say is if you want to transfer out of Free Trade, it's £17 per US holding. So let's say, for example, you had, I don't know, something crazy like 100 US shares. You need to be aware that you will pay maybe £1,700. Not that anyone will have that, but you may have 20 or 30 US stocks that you want to charge. So you do have to pay that fee. And of course, most of them are going to be free to transfer in because they all want you to transfer into their service so it doesn't really apply. Some may have more specific fees for transferring out which you need to be aware of but you can't almost find that information on a lot of providers so it's kind of important you get this right in the first place. And there's not a huge amount going in terms of bonuses but people like Interactive Investor will actually give you a bonus of up to a thousand pound if you transfer in plus some free fees for the first six months which is quite enticing. And both Fidelity and Best Invest will give you up to 500 pound towards the fees if there's any to transfer in. I think some of the bigger exit fees traditionally apply to the more traditional maybe your Avivas and all that kind of stuff. The more traditional pensions that most of the population do have. Now trying to decide which one of these is the best is very difficult. But what I've done to try and help illustrate the cost is do this. So you can see here I've compared some of the fees side by side. So I just took Hargreaves Lansdowne, Vanguard and Interactive Investor as an example. And this assumes you will buy one ETF every single month. Of course with HL you could go for a fund which would make it a bit cheaper but I've just gone for an ETF for this example to make it easier. So on the left you can see the different amounts, I've got 5, 10, 25, 50, all the way up to a million and this is what your account fees will be doing that depending on the amount. So we can see here with Hargus Lansdowne it's £52 on £5,000 which seems expensive whereas Vanguard is only £7.50 an interactive investor is actually going to be £161 for the year, which seems really expensive. But it actually works out to be £13.50 for the month. Now this is where it gets quite interesting. And because I've compared the three, you can see where the fees start to balance out. So Vanguard is actually really cheap, all the way up to 100,000. So at 100,000, Vanguard's 150, we've got Hargis Lansdowne at 229, but Interactive Investor, 
because it's a flat fee, is still £161. Now, if we jump up to 250000 this is where it makes a giant difference. So Vanguard would charge you their maximum account fee, which is 375 whereas Interactive Investor is only charging 161 So paying a flat fee eventually will work out cheaper. So one sensible strategy could be to go for Vanguard and then transfer over to Interactive Investor later. But... This is what I did. So I went for Vanguard, but I've realized when I get to the point when I want to transfer my pension, I'm probably going to lose my historical data. Now, there's no guarantee that will happen and you would have to speak to the providers to see if you can keep it. But personally, I kind of like the fact I could see when I've invested £10,000 and it's gone all the way up and I can see all of those points that I've bought it along and track how my progress has been. Now that might seem quite small, but actually a lot of people will really want to do that. The other factor you need to consider is because you can only buy Vanguard funds, sometimes they're not always necessarily the cheapest. So you could buy a cheaper alternative over an interactive investor, which would bring the cost down even more. So there's quite a lot of things you need to consider, what you want to buy and how you want to do it. And of course, you can't buy stocks on Vanguard. So if you wanted to have a couple of stocks and shares in your pension, you can't do that. Maybe you want to buy some Microsoft, Google or Tesla and hope it's going to ride off into the sunset by the time you retire. An interactive investor is the one I see recommended more than any. Especially within the financial independence community, it seems to be super, super popular. So if we take a typical investor who's aged 35 with an accumulated pension pot of 100,000, and over a 30 year cycle, they add 10,000 pound for the year. And let's say they buy and sell one trade every year. Now, when we look at the total value of the portfolio after 30 years, with Interactive Investor, it would be 1.1 million. With Hargreaves Lansdowne, of course, it would be a difference of 67,000 pound, which is whopping. Now, of course, with some people, it's not going to be as much. AJ Bell is only £26,000 difference. And with Vanguard, it's only going to be an £11,000 difference. So actually, the difference between Interactive Investor and Vanguard could cost you £10,000 in the portfolio difference. And then, of course, if you take into account the charges, You've also got a difference of £36,000 with Hargreaves Lansdowne, AJ Bell 13000 Fidelity 20000 and with Vanguard it's going to be a £5,800 difference. So between the two, even looking at Vanguard, you could be looking at a £17,000 difference between the two accounts. So personally, I think out of these, for me, Interact Investor is probably a no-brainer. I'm hoping that later this year, Invest Engine open their pension. I don't think they will have their drawdown facility when they open, but... For me, I don't need to draw down for another 20 years. So I'll have to see what happens in that space. But for now, I would say either go for Vanguard or go for Interactive Investor. You may want to consider some of the other options, but it's just going to depend on your personal needs. And remember, on this channel, I am building my own pension from 0 to 100k. So you want to follow along with that series and see my last update, check it out here. And I've also done comparisons for the best ISA and lifetime ISA. So if you haven't seen those, go and check those out too. And if you have any questions about any of these providers, let me know down below and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys over there.